Here we go. It's a foodie Friday on the Alive and Social Network. Everybody's kind of whispering around the fringes here can because we, can we it? talk now? Because, because Emily Soleil brought samples and food and, and Lids is serving it up here and it all looks really, really delicious. Hello, foodie friends. How are you? Very good. Call and response. I'm doing so well. I'm doing very well. <laughs> I'm doing even better now that I have a plate of delicious food in front of me here in the Alive and Social Network studio. I have a question. Are you sick of eating crepes? No, never. Never. Mm -mm, never. never ever. Predisposed. Right. <laughs> how can you I can be, eat every How day. can you be French and get sick of something like that? Probably not, huh? I uh, mean, no. No, no crepe. Every, yeah, every day. Pro eat pro it. Probably built into the bloodstream in some fashion, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, built into your cultural imperative. There's so many things you can put in them, you know? Like this one is savory, and in the weekend I'll have sweet ones, and yeah. at midnight I'll have sweet ones with Nutella, and, you know? And they're, so, and they're <laughs> easy to make. They're fast and easy to make, too. Right, and very there's easy. Nothing much to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's the voice of Emily Soleil. She's the proprietor of Le Town Talk Diner and Drinkery. That's I right. love that. It's got it's sort of an adverb thing going on. You I know? like that. Drinkery. Yes. yes. Uh, I ran drinkery across the, the yard. You know, it's like, a, like an <laughs> adverb, you know? That's what I'm saying. Where's your yeah. father? Oh, I think he's at the drinkery. He's at the drinkery. So now it becomes a noun. <laughs> See, it's a very, very flexible word, and I like all aspects of it. I like it <laughs> all. Uh, with a name like Soleil... Uh, C E L L A I, yes. And Le Town Talk Diner, yes. Where in France do you hail from, Emily? I am from Marseille, and uh, <clears throat> Sele is actually well, my dad's name, mm -hmm. and he is from Tuscany, Italy. And, and by the way, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> This is I delicious. A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now right, you better take a break from explaining the last name Soleil, your father's name. Mm -hmm. uh, this, and try it a, out. There's a crepe with um, some ham. I got a little. Yeah, smoked ham and Gruyere cheese. Oh my mm -hmm. god! So that's on our mm. happy hour menu and brunch menu, lunch menu. Yeah. It's everywhere. It's the everywhere menu. So good. It's a yes. switch hitter. Yeah. Right. And you know what I'm digging about it? Like a lot of foods, especially something like this. Uh, I like it. It's a little better room temp. I mean, mm. not to say that hot is, you know, I, I, I wouldn't not eat it if it were hot. I'm just <laughs> saying, I, I, the more the flavor, I think more mm -hmm. of the flavors come out. I agree. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. I'm going to make this last. <laughs> There's more crisps I know, to be had. Yeah. I know, but I'm still going to. I'm still going to make it last. I'm going to pace myself on uh, on this one right here. So, I am I incorrect? Soleil is not a French uh, name, or is it Italian? Like it's you Italian. Say, yeah, okay, Italian. Mm -hmm. All right, yep. got it. Yep. Got it. You know, the Romance languages share a lot of things, so it, it, it appeared very French to me. Right. Mm -hmm. So Marseille, uh, you know, right on right on the uh, Mediterranean coast. Yes, you grew know, up on a beach. Yeah, fame. Mm -hmm. Really, With you did? fresh fish. Yeah. yeah, fresh fish, yeah, always. I mean, famed for so many, uh, you know, famous uh, uh, dishes and mm -hmm. just... just uh, 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 culture. Yeah, culture, just a gastronomical vibe there. Right. I mean... Uh, it's a fantastic city. It's I, I describe it as rough and beautiful. Okay, you know it's like uh, very multicultural and it's just it, yeah, unbelievably beautiful. Like the blues are just the blue sky and the water is just very particular to Marseille with the white rocks and um, yeah the beaches that uh, uh, tourists don't know about. You know that all the locals know and can sneak and um, yeah. It's almost so. Greek. In right. its description, and it's a it's a port city that it's a port city. It was started by the Greeks, actually. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's there's that whole aspect of it right there. It's some of the architectural elements and other things are are in place there from the Greek culture. Then. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. What happened with uh, with mom and dad's meeting? I'm going to take. Uh, I want you to take us back even further because I'm curious. So dad's from Italy. Uh, is your mother French then? Or? My mom's French. My dad was born in Marseille also. Okay. So I'll take you back to my grandparents, I All guess. Right. So uh, my grandma was from Luca, Tuscany. And my grandpa was from Arezzo, Tuscany. And they uh, both moved to France for to work and uh, met uh, in Marseille. So... Uh, it's kind of like here and uh, the Sweet Hollow, you know, in St. Paul. Mm -hmm. All the Italians mm -hmm. lived there. Sure. So all the Italians lived uh, by the water in Marseille. In Marseille. Yeah, yeah, yeah in that sure. that specific area. So that's where they met. And they had uh, four kids. And one of them was my dad. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And uh, we travel. We Every time we go back to Marseille, we always uh, go to Tuscany. Just to visit family, use that as an excuse, right? To oh, drink that's an easy right. excuse. Yeah. <laughs> but we have to go we see must. our family. Yes, this is it's terrible. Important. Oh, I'm, I'm so disappointed in this. Don't. Yes, yes. <laughs> and you do still have extended family there, then? Oh huh? yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, we go there quite often. So, 
And what was the kitchen like in your home? Oh, was there was there delicious. Italian? <laughs> <laughs> Always. There were morning crepes and afternoon crepes and dessert crepes. Correct. And yeah, we cooked inside and out. You know, growing up in Marseille, the weather's fantastic. So the kitchen, you know, we had a kitchen inside the house and a kitchen outside the house. Also. Oh wow! So we did a lot of things outside, and uh, um, you know, it's very funny because my mom was not a good cook to start with. You know, <laughs> and, but my grandma, so my my dad's mom was a fantastic cook, and. When my parents get together, my mom was like, you know, making things, and my dad constantly was uh, telling her, "Oh, my mom makes it better. Oh, my mom makes it that way." My, <laughs> you know? A nightmare, right? So yeah. my mom said, "You know, this is enough. I'm gonna have to learn how to cook." <laughs> you know, so she took that challenge and uh, and became a very, very, very good cook. So. We were lucky to grow up in that kind of war, kitchen war all the time, you know. My grandma trying her Italian dishes and my mom, like, south of France. And Were you so. a part of that process, your mom's learning process? Was it like... No, you know, like, once... Uh, yeah, no, I think she started before before okay. she had us. So I'm used to my mom working full-time and getting home and cooking a four course meal every single day. Oh my god. So that's what I'm used to. Sure. And, that's just and, a part of her day and her the way right. her culture in her heart lived. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's just how life was and you know, I mean for me it was normal to sit at the dinner table for an hour, an hour and a half with my parents <laughs> and yeah. and share our day and our you know, what we did and and what we're gonna do the next day and what we're gonna eat next and and where we're gonna shop and um and all that. So, and how yeah. and just how you feeling, you know? Right. Yeah, share emotions, yeah, emotions, not just not just things that happen, but how are you? Right. And yeah. where are you in your head mm -hmm. and you know where do you hope to be tomorrow and all of those dreams and aspirations that come from sharing right. thoughts and emotions and ideas and especially around dinner time. Especially around dinner mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a very important part of uh important important part of life that, you know, right. we well we're seeing it happen, you know, that embracing of you know, it's called the slow food movement, but mm -hmm. it's really just sort of a return to the real food movement, wouldn't you think? I mean, because it wasn't just a French thing. It's not just a European thing. I mean, a whole lot of America used to embrace this it as used well. used to be that way. Yeah, yes. exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much anymore, but people are making, Going back to that. making measures to return right. to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can see the difference, I think, with the farmer's market and the way people are eating and, and uh, the new new generation, like the new families. You know, I think they, they really care about that, spending time at the dinner table and mm -hmm. sourcing their product and knowing where it's coming from, especially in Minnesota. I think, you know, if I'm very, I feel very lucky to be here instead of a different city because uh, we can grow a lot of different things here and people embrace like the short growing season that we have and people always want to, you know, they they really want to know where everything is coming from and what do you do with it and and the adventurous you know i, I feel like um my mother-in-law ate very plain food you know but mm -hmm. like she'll she'll be adventurous and try something new or her kids you know for example they they'll try something that they never had before growing up or you know i feel like minnesota are, are looking for those new things do you feel like in years. in your household that was definitely a narrative that got pushed forward was introducing new flavors and new ingredients in the kitchen rather than going out to eat was or was there maybe a we, mix of the two or yeah, we never went out. Yeah, we never it was went always out to mom eat. making yes. dinner. Yes, we went to the farmers market. You know, every weekend or during the week, just go to the farm and pick up whatever they had. And you know, just going with the season. You know, in the winter we were eating oranges and and clementines, and in the summer we'll be eating strawberries. There was no tomatoes mm -hmm. in the winter, sure. and uh, there's no watermelon in the winter. You know, so we and and that was just a normal thing. Um, well, things that are growing in the garden, you know, we always had an herb garden or, you know, and but Marseille, like you grow a lot of things all year round too, yeah. you know. So. Because of that climate there. Yeah, right. You're on, the, you're on the seashore and all of that. Yeah, right. it's a warmer thing. Although it gets pretty rainy in the wintertime, but you can still grow yes. a lot more, like you said. Yeah. You know, more seasonality. Exactly. But yeah, my, my, my dad actually uh, was a banker, so he ate at the restaurant every for lunch every day and he hated it going because he thought my mom was a better cook than <laughs> what he could get I at the that. restaurant. That's right? great. Yeah, but my mom hated it because she never got to go to the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> sure, banker dad, right. right. No, I had to entertain a client, you know, okay. Right. right. Sure you did. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> what I think is so interesting about uh, the town talk diner now is you're redefining French cuisine. Um, and that's something that we're trying to kind 
trying to do with this podcast is redefining foodie and what that means and kind of breaking that down a little bit more because there's this whole idea built up, especially in American minds where a French restaurant, well, that's going to be out of my pocket, amazing food. But all of a sudden I have to take out a loan to Mm -hmm. buy all this food. Or or, or am I going to eat snails? Is that all you're going to serve me? I've heard that about French restaurants, you know. (laughs) Exactly. Or you have to dress up for it. And, you know, everything is... Yeah, fancy, expensive, and you don't understand what's written on the menu, and and we we yeah, that's exactly what we're trying to do is like redefine what the people think about French food and French restaurants. So it's a little bit of a challenge, but I think once people get in there and then understand and see it and you know experience it, they just embrace it and love it. So. Yeah. Demystify it a little bit along the way, right. right? Make it a little more real, right? Have you felt like there's been a pushback at all? in redefining traditional French cuisine or even here where we're very open to different food? Has there been moments in time where it's been like, oh, well, this is not selling at all like I thought it would? (laughs) (laughs) I feel like we knew it was going to be a challenge, Mm -hmm. you know, because it's, I mean, it's a a progress, but we've only been open for seven months. So I think it's just like spreading the word and then uh, just keep keeping up with it you know yeah. it's like because we believe in it i think you know people really like that i, I think you guys in minnesota had the f- new french cafe it was called mm-hmm. and it was very successful very successful and, right? absolutely so, yeah, yeah we, you know it's, it's i think similar to what they were doing uh, but yeah, there's no, nobody else. So I, at first, we're like, oh, if nobody else did it, maybe it's something that's gonna, <laughs> yeah. gonna work. But uh, maybe it wasn't done the proper way. Well, I don't know, you know. But we're just going for it, and we're having fun with it and loving it. So some fond memories of the new French, you know, for a lot of uh, St. Paul and certainly Minneapolis residents, given that it was in Minneapolis's warehouse district back in the day when. There was no freeway running through the warehouse district. Mm-hmm. There was obviously, you know, no target field, certainly. Right. Uh, the gentrification that's, you know, that's apparent now from not only St. Paul, especially in Lower Town, but also all of downtown St. Paul. Same holds true with Minneapolis, you know, the North Loop, et cetera, warehouse district. Mm-hmm. It was one of those bastions, uh, you know, one of the handful of just kind of cool, fun, but very accessible, right. uh, demystified. You, you could feel comfortable just being there. You didn't have to think, uh, again, French food. Oh, my goodness. No, right. it was very real, very genuine. But, uh, again, just a, a, a small cluster of places were there that were like that. Right. And uh, and so, again, a lot of fond memories. So it's nice to hear that you use that as sort of a jumping off point in your mind's eye. Yeah. You know, a little bit to, you know, to, do, to define and explain what you're doing with mm-hmm. La Town Talk. And we feel like the neighborhood that we're in, you know, we're in a Longfellow neighborhood and it's a lot of like people that live there for a long time and then all those new families that are embracing that kind of concept. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's, it's fitting. The concept is fitting where we are and, you know, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been fun and yeah. Well, there's a long history with that, with that venue. I mean, when it was just, when it was Town Talk Diner. Yes. Can you speak to some of that? I mean, you know, I, I know a bit of it, but I'd rather hear it from your perspective, what you know about it, because you're in the space now. Right. Well, I only <clears throat> lived here for 13 years, so, uh, but I guess the diner started in uh, 1940, mm-hmm. and it was an alley that the... the between guy, the buildings? Between yeah. the buildings, mm-hmm. yeah. And it just, uh, you know, pour a concrete floor and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and ran a diner in there, yeah. and then people, there's people get, from... Get some, get some plumbing in there, and we're good. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you know, actually, there is no basement underneath that that uh, part of the restaurant because it was the alley. It was the alley. So, yeah, yeah we how about don't that? have a basement. So it was challenging for yeah, yeah. doing some of the remodeling that we did. But uh, <laughs> we, we made it. We did it. We figured it out. A little jackhammer will yeah. jack <laughs> get you into that concrete right. floor. <laughs> Nothing to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it started in 1940 with a diner. People still talk about the pancakes that they had there. You know, wow. like, do you serve those pancakes still? And I'm like, well, it's a little. We have crepes. We have See, crepes. That's <laughs> right, right, right. We have crepes. We have uh, French pancakes. <laughs> yeah. Just a little thinner. Is yeah. there is there a French equivalent for a diner? Or is it more? I would say a bistro. Okay. A bistro. Yeah. So that's what I tell people. You know, it's a, so we call it a French diner, but it's, it, yeah, think about a bistro or a cafe. So the concept is, you know, somebody that's on a date can go there. A family with kids can go there. And then somebody, uh, like, you can have girls' night out and you can all be in the same room and everybody feels comfortable and everybody feels welcome. And, you know, the guy that just got done working in his yard can come in his sweatpants and just sit there. And then, you know, some guys that are just done working in downtown. 
Danton can come and sit next to them, and it's okay. Would you find that same vibe happening at a French bistro in Marseille, then? That yes. same sort of thing. You'd have working class people, people that are dressed a little finer, right. maybe going out to a, a movie or, mm-hmm. or an opera. Who knows what? Yeah. I mean, that's sort of the bistro vibe there, yes. yeah? yeah. All classes... Right, you know, everybody's together, and you know, and affordable dishes, and and yeah, affordable wine, good variety, and yeah. Well, I think especially where it's located too, it's a mix of everybody. Everybody kind of passes around those crossroads there, so oh, yeah. it really allows people to check it out. Things, food that they wouldn't necessarily be hip to, or you know, what is a croque madame? That sounds really fancy, and it's like, oh. Ham and cheese. Ham and cheese. Gotcha. With an egg. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like right. everything about that. That's what yeah. we point them to on the menu, you know. Like, yeah. you're crumb is true, crook madame, you'll be happy. I believe me, you know, <laughs> you, you can eat that. Yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll be just fine. Right, yep, right. You'll be fine. So you've been here for 13 years. Yes. Um, so, so did you begin your food adventure as a food professional before that time then when you, when you were still living in France or did you live somewhere else? Did you come from France to here or was, were there other adventures before arriving in Minnesota? Well, I, uh, I, I went to culinary school when I was 15. Okay. So I went to culinary school and I did like uh, hotel and re- restaurant management school also. So that was like five years of my life. And then I moved to Paris. And that's sort of a, fr- a, a French and a European way of going to school, whereby, you know, you can, take, right. you can start taking a professional tack in what you want to do yes. in sort of those high school, even early high school, mm-hmm. quote unquote, years. So right. you, can, you, be, you can begin what you want to start Your doing. Your career. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I did that. And uh, so I work at diverse like, restaurants in Marseille, you know, on the port. And, uh, and then once I was done with school, I moved to Paris. Okay. Um, this is sounding very romantic. I mean, just, you know, I mean, I'm just... <laughs> I'm seeing, you know, I'm getting one of those cinema, cinema things going on in my head, you know, with the, yeah, yeah, I'm, seeing you, yeah I'm seeing you on the train, you've got your, you've got your suitcase right. with all of the, very all, Amelie, all, yeah, and and the yeah. Yeah. Amelie, you know, but yeah, you've got all the, you know, all the places you visited, you know, placards on the side of your uh, suitcase, okay, That's I'm, right. I, you know, I'm, okay, oh, really, yeah, you're carrying a balloon, you're I'm just know. building up this fantasy yeah. in your I know, head. I know, <laughs> But wait, you haven't heard the best part. Oh, here we go. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, so oh, oh, you, you haven't been in my head, sister. <laughs> it's, it's, it's scary. It's looking I, pretty good. Do yeah. I want to go there? I yeah, don't know. right. <laughs> um, so you I, go to Paris. Yeah. I went to Paris and I worked on the, at the restaurant on the Eiffel Tower for two oh years. Oh my oh. god, cool, mm-hmm. <laughs> cool. Right? Yep. And where is that in the tower? Is it is it like the halfway point? The, the, where yeah, the big, the, where the first, big platform is. Right. There? Yeah. The first floor. First floor. Wow. So best view of Paris no, on the Eiffel Tower every day. But that's and... already like what two hundred and some feet high, then, yeah. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That's already a, a sizable elevation. You there were living Paris. a cliche. This right. is fantastic. <laughs> 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 So and then girl. I move to Paris and I work on the Eiffel Tower. This just totally. sounds With like my, a dream. I lived right. in the eighth arrondissement. It was wonderful. <laughs> I took a bike to work. I rode my bike every day to work. <laughs> Baguette in the back in the basket. <laughs> I had a parakeet. The balloon thing that BT mentioned. <laughs> what kind That's of... so that is so cool. <laughs> So you go. You, so what were you doing there? Were you uh, uh, did Did you start? All right, Emily. Nice right. to have you here. Here's the dishwasher. Or where did it begin for you? Well, at that point, I tried the kitchen, and uh, I I love cooking and everything. You know, I have you know degrees in kitchen, you, but what you what you trained for, yeah. But right, but uh, I really like the front of the house a lot okay. better. Just meeting people and talking to everybody that was kind of my passion, so. which you also trained for, right? Yes. What kind of restaurant is on the Eiffel Tower? So uh, that one is more, uh, the one on the first floor is more. It's kind of a bistro, a little fancier than a bistro, you know. Like there's glass windows all around, and you have the fantastic view, and just traditional, very traditional dishes and on the second floor uh there is a restaurant called jules verne which is uh, a lot fancier and white tablecloth and you know you have to book out like maybe six months in advance and named and... after the famous writer right yeah that's pretty mm-hmm. cool yeah yeah so... as far as working front of house in that spot specifically you must have seen just 
a complete mixture of people similar to where you're located right near lake street and 27th and right. getting that entirely mix of people but there must have been a bunch of tourists i'm guessing or was oh, it mainly tourists. mainly yeah. tourists yeah. mainly tourists <laughs> not very that many local unless I they were taking people okay there. we'll oh. go to the eiffel tower right because <laughs> you have to wait a long time in the bottom you know there is a long line to get on the eiffel tower but like you know then we get like the at seven o'clock five o'clock and seven o'clock we get the the buses you know the tour oh buses that come before the show and then they go to moulin rouge and <laughs> and watch the show so anyway it was fun and then we have like the 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 show business people you know we we saw a few people like uh, the best one was uh buena vista social club Ooh. remember that singer oh, what was his name uh compay segundo Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that guy came. That was my favorite uh, that <laughs> person to cool. see because I really like that music. But oh yeah, a lot of lot of uh, show business people came just to you know be on the Eiffel Tower and <laughs> yeah. But yeah, not too many local. Lots of tourists. A lot yeah, of yeah. happy people. It was a great place to work at because everybody was very very happy because they were on the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, they, yeah right? exactly. And they made it up. They made it through the right. first line. You know, and they're there. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, uh, did you start picking up some of the other even in small amounts like uh, languages that really helped us? serve you even for greetings i mean if you saw you know if you knew it was a german couple if you knew you know if, if it was a you know an english couple or or, or person or whatever the right. case may be do you start picking up some of that in that sort of front no. of house environment that tourist yeah. driven front Not of house too much it was more english english okay because it's kind so. of a second language for a lot of europe and and visitors would be would be english even japanese english, visitors and yes. others yeah Right. Yeah. So I, I do knew a little bit of Italian because we lived in Italy with my parents for five uh -huh. years. So I knew a little bit of that. And then, uh, you know, that's that's kind of where I learned English. You know, I learned at school, but then you don't you don't really speak English. Or when I moved here, for example, I thought I spoke really good English after yeah. two oh, years boy. on the Eiffel Tower. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then some, some American talked to me and I'm like, what? Whoa. What are you talking about? <laughs> is this English? Right. This is, you're speaking English. Well, the, how's it going? I'm like, what? what? Yeah. How's it going? What are you oh, saying? What, yeah. <laughs> what did that mean? Yeah. What is going and how? Right. Uh, what? <laughs> Interestingly, I've watched Star Trek, and English is the universal language for the galaxy. Yeah, they go to all these. <laughs> have you seen that? Because they go to these planets, and and they yeah, land, and English? they beam down, and and uh, they're up. <laughs> they don't have to speak, you know. Melkoshian five, you know, everybody speaks English. It's they, just no, weird. they speak American. Oh, yeah, American. That's right. I'm sorry, Lydia. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> oh, you know what? You bring up something here because I want to bring it up with, with Emily here. Uh, uh, before we got the show started today, you were asking a question about a food word that you discovered, and it's a, but it's a Quebecois rather than mm -hmm. a French word. And then Emily goes, they they don't speak French, French in, in in Quebec, do in they? Quebec. No, I mean I mean there's French foundation to it, obviously, right. but it's it's Quebecois. They yeah. do have their own language. Yeah. too. their yes. accent is that's really funky. interesting. Very funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a because I think there's an American perspective because of the French roots of Quebec yes. that well you know it's French and mm -hmm. it's, they speak French, but no, it's it's they've got their own variation on it. Kind of like American is different than English. English, yeah. And like Mexican is different than Spanish right. in a lot of ways. Yeah. So what's the word? What was it again? Cuisine. Cuisinoman. 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 It means foodie. Food. Quebecois. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good word. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I gotta so. imagine Friday's the same in both languages, wouldn't you think? In French and in, uh, in Quebecois? What is it? Vendredi. Vendredi. Mm -hmm. So put them together. Uh, vendredi. Uh, Cuisinoman. Uh, vendredi. <laughs> Cuisinoman. Vendredi. Oui, oui. Oui, oui. That's cool. Cousine Amman, Vendredi, on the Live and Social Network. <laughs> bon oh. travail. Bon oh. travail. Oh. 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 <laughs> of course. You know, I had to do the stereotype there. Right? Yeah, you got to put a little Marie Chevalier in there. Just a little. Oh. <laughs> so after working at the Eiffel Tower, what was the next step on your path kind of getting towards Minnesota? You said you had mentioned that you worked at Sofitel. Right. And uh, so uh, before I worked at the Eiffel Tower in Paris, I worked at the Sofitel okay. and, uh, in Paris also in one location and then in Marseille also. So like throughout my training, you know, I worked for them. And uh, yeah. And so my next step after the Eiffel Tower in Paris was Bloomington, Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask right? you. There's a, no, there's Did a that soapy. Make you dream? There's Industrious a soapy. Yeah, Bloomington. yeah, boy, yeah, it just, uh, just shattered everything. There's a Sophie Till in Bloomington. Are they? The, is that the same company? Is it the same right. family of hotel? It is yes. the same. Yeah. It was okay. the first Sophie Till in the United States. In, is actually. the one in Bloomington? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you say Bloomington. That's where you went then. That that's right. Sophie Tell. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Industry, well, commerce, well, but, Bloomington. You know, but but 
Pierre Radisson, he was a Frenchman, so it could have been the uh, Radisson. The Radisson. Uh, Radisson. Radisson. <laughs> but no, it was Sofitel. All right, very good. Yeah. What are the marked differences in a Sofitel in France and a Sofitel in Bloomington? Mm, well, that one was very old. So it okay. was, you know, I think they changed actually. They sold it because they couldn't tear it down and make the updates that they want to. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, th- I feel like the hotels in, in France or Europe in general are a lot more modern, like uh, cleaner designs and things like that. So that will be a well, We're trying to go more old world here in the right. States and trying to evoke some kind of, oh, do you remember the Moulin Rouge? Right. <laughs> French, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Although there, there is a trend toward that more modernistic design as it's well. It's coming, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The cleaner lines right. and just sort of that, uh, that uh, more, mm, for want of a better phrase, worldly look about it, right. that modern worldly look. Are there French food habits that you wish America would adopt? This wow, part. that's a good question. <laughs> uh, Similar you know, to- it's, it's getting there. I mean, care about what you eat. Uh, just use the food simply and, uh, and spend a lot of time at the dinner table. There you go. You I know? think, yeah, because we hit that one earlier, you right. know, with your background and having those hour right. and a half dinners and everybody's gathered around that. I'm still bothered, uh, like spending like 20 minutes or 30 minutes at the dinner table and, and that's, that's it, it, you know, yeah. or like, uh, having just one big plate or one, one thing I don't like is, uh, like when you have a buffet or like somebody like go and then you put all your food in there and then you put your fruits or your sweets mixed together oh, with your entree. Uh, uh, um, you don't um, like on the side of the plate. Yeah, 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 I don't like that. Disgusting. That, yeah. yeah, that annoys me. I'll just put. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'll just I'll put that caramel roll right on top of the fried chicken. Oh, that you know, salad. Yeah. That that Snickers salad. You yeah. guys have a salad uh, with Snickers or yeah. marshmallow yeah. or oh, something, sure right? Yeah, yeah. I had you marshmallow know that salad. Yeah. Right, yeah. and yeah. that's a salad. Yeah. Well, in, in some eras, ketchup was a vegetable, you know, as far as school lunches go. So, mm, you know, similar way of thinking. So slow down, you know, spend right. time together. Right. Be careful and, and be knowledgeable about, about what you're putting in your mouth. You know, you don't have to be a huge source-oriented person, but just to, to a certain extent. Right. You know, pay, pay mind to that. And uh, how, about, how about the aspect of, of making food together, too? Would you consider that one that happened for you as a kid and, yeah. and that we're... That you know, maybe more people are embracing now, but certainly we're not maybe doing enough of that. Yeah, I, I see. Like you know, like families doing it now, and I think it's very important to get your kids involved uh, in the cooking. That's what one thing that my mom did. You know, we're plucking the green beans, or we're mm-hmm. cleaning the vegetables, or mm-hmm. chopping something, or mixing a batter, or you know, she always let us do those things. And I think, and I, I do the same thing with my daughter. You know, she she chops and she has a knife, and but I'm watching her. You know, and then I get her involved, and every time she's involved, she eats it. Yeah. She eats it. Yeah. She'll be adventurous and she'll eat that lettuce. She'll eat that dill. She'll eat that, you know, that's something that a three year old will like not even stay close to. Yeah, if they didn't know? know about it. If, or they, if they didn't did, know if about they were it. Involved you know? in it. Right, sure. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's very important, yeah, to be involved and and, and then then you make that communication last longer instead mm. of just talking at the dinner table, you can talk while you're in the kitchen and uh, maybe so. maybe in a deeper way. Right. I mean you get a certain kind of conversation at a dinner table, but in that prep mode while you're while you're right. preparing the food sometimes conversations get even into into a more intimate place right i heard that some it's easier for guys to talk about it because they are concentrated and do or like um i heard about not in cooking but at construction like they're doing a project and they're concentrating at doing something so they are talking more easily because they're not looking at somebody in in somebody's eyes yeah 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 yeah. so yeah definitely yeah speaking speaking for the guy perspective i can see that i absolutely you know so you've got a singular focus not that it's difficult for me or a lot of men to look at somebody and converse, but I, I totally see where you're coming right. from. Because for a lot of men, and, and some women certainly too, maybe a lot of women, I don't know. Right. But uh, that's why I'm saying that, the, that that prep mode, when you're focusing on one thing, mm-hmm. and because it, it allows the other side of the brain to free up, uh, right. it can get very intimate. I like that. You have a bunch of recipes inspired by family recipes, or they have the basis in family recipes on the menu right now. What's your favorite dish on there from a family recipe? Oh, or does it have does it have like ties, emotional ties that kind of harken back to certain memories or being around the dinner table with your family? Yeah, uh, the 
the crepes will be one of them because uh, we did that a lot with my mom. <laughs> uh, but you know the the chocolate mousse is my mom, like which you guys have to okay, try. I'm trying so, this right now. Um, I'm that's... still gonna have some more crepe first, so I'm just letting you know. Right, you know? right, yeah. silly yeah. rabbit. Because the pacing that I talked about, I, I paced a little <laughs> faster than than I thought. So. Yeah, so <laughs> the chocolate mousse definitely remind, like, completely remind me of my mom, and it doesn't remind me of my mom. It reminds me of cooking with my mom, making it with my mom. So that's that's a good one, and and the bouillabaisse, you know, I mean, it's classic. That's just a Marseille, that's you know the the staple of Marseille. Absolutely. Like when you say Marseille, you think bouillabaisse, but you know, it's 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 hard to make it here because we do not have those rock fish that we make right. the soup from. But you know, we try to get as close as possible. We still put the pastis in it, which is that anise liquor. You know, we still put the orange zest that make a whole lot of difference. And and uh, so all those little flavors. You know, when I take a bite, it just it's kind of like the the movie Ratatouille. You know, yeah. like he's, he goes way back into his childhood <laughs> when when he eats that ratatouille and. So yeah, it does that to me for sure. Yeah. You know what? I, it, given that bouillabaisse base is such a classic, uh, I don't want you to get too specific, but uh, I want you to wa walk us through the recipe. You know, okay. just you know, starting from, you know, the ba you know, walk us through it because I think that'd be an interesting, a little All mental right. exercise for you. But, right, you know, but and I've had but I but I've had bouillabaisse and mm -hmm. I've and I've never I've never made it. So, you know, just again, I it's don't want very you simple. don't feel don't worry about getting too specific. I'm just right. I'm really interested. It's very simple. It's you know, and and again, it's just like fresh ingredients will make a, a lot of difference, but you start with fish bones and you 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 know, with some olive oil in the bottom of your pan, you sear that, da da da, you cook it a little bit and then um you throw some uh, leeks is really good, onions, uh, a couple carrots, just to give those you know those nice flavors. So you're saying you mm. filleted those fish, so you've pulled the meat off the fish is what right. you're saying. So then you you got the bones there, just the bones, heads too, no heads. Yes, okay, heads yep, too. all right, good, yep. good. So you got everything there, thing. yep, all right, mm -hmm. good. Uh, Sorry, I'm gonna have to rethink it. No, now I have stuff. guys making it for me. You know? <laughs> like you said, throw some leeks there in there, throw some other, yeah, some, vegetables some other aromatics in there. in there, sort of a mirepoix kind of thing right. in there. It's some carrot right. ends too, that sort of thing. Or, yep. yeah. And then uh, you know you can throw some some tomatoes, and then you 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 uh, always put some wine and deglaze it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Always, always add some wine. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you top it with water, you put some bay leaves in there, some herb de Provence if you want to, maybe not too much because that will just give it a different taste actually, but uh, bay leaves for sure, it's always good. And then you put that orange zest that I was telling you yeah. about too, that gives like a nice citrus flavor to it. Um, and then you put a, a shot of pastis, um, let it reduce, you know, take everything out. Uh, I like to, you know, a good thing is that I like to mash everything once you once you uh, strain everything to mash it. So then you do get some of the meat mm -hmm. a little bit thicker. Yeah, okay. You know, in, in Marseille we let, you know, bouillabaisse means when it boils you reduce it. I see. When it boils, that's what the word means. Lower okay, it. Yeah. okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Do you fish the? Do you, do you literally fish the fish bones out of there, uh, or what? You do just you strain it. You know, okay. just strain the whole thing, and then we. Put it in a moulin. I don't know how you even say it in English. A strainer, yeah, or yeah, something a strainer, that, that, that pushes, that allow, it, that allows yeah. the soft material to push through. Yeah, okay, right. like like a, like a uh, spatzel maker would do, or something like that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, then you then you add uh, you add your uh, your fish that you want to put in there. So at the restaurant, we use cod and grouper and mussels and clams. Um, and then you just uh, we put more pastis in it at the end just to give that good anise. Because why not? Right, <laughs> fennel is a big one, and I yep. forgot. Which has that fennel. anise flavor yes, too. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, that's very important. So, are, yeah. are you more of a front of house person now? Would you consider yourself more of a front of house? Because this I, is very back of house. Right, I like it much better in the front. Yes, I. You know, the, so the recipes, a lot of the recipes are from my mom and my grandma, mm -hmm. and um, uh, so I, I just pick up the ideas of. <clears throat> what a classic, uh, you know, French bistro will have. So I just, yeah, I just say, here, we'll do that sausage with this and blah, blah, blah. And then the guys kind of make the recipes, come up with the recipes from it. So, yeah. What's so it's a team, teamwork, <laughs> you know, teamwork. The first menu was like completely me, recipes from me and everything, but I kind of pass it on. And <laughs> now I have fun with my customer in France. <laughs> do, you have, do you have any other, other, other people from France or of that 
or maybe Quebecois or just of French origin that are working in the in the kitchen now, or that bring that vibe uh, from a real cultural perspective there. Or are uh, you the lo- are you the are you the Lone Ranger there, the Lone French Ranger? I'm kind of the Lone Ranger, <laughs> yeah. but my uh, my kitchen manager is actually really really good at um, researching. So he when he when he first uh, worked for us, he researched where I was from because when you think about French food, you think about creme fraiche, butter, blah blah blah. You know, it's a lot of uh, dairy products. Oh yeah. But where I'm from in Marseille, it's it's we don't cook with that. You know, we cook with olive oil, garlic, and herb. More, it's so on it's the Mediterranean, very yeah. Mediterranean yeah. Yeah. food. Yeah, yeah. So you know that was one very pleasing thing when when he came up. He's like, yeah, I did some research and you know try this and try that. And I'm like, yeah, this is exactly it. You know, this is exactly what I'm looking for. So it's a great fit. He's he's you know I'm very proud of the work they do back there and. And uh, I appreciate, you know, the research and trying to understand what, what I'm looking for for the flavors. So, so uh, Marseille food, uh, foods from Nice, uh, yes. other, other coastal uh, towns are going to be similar. Whereas the continental yes. foods, where there are dairies and more so, right? And, the, and the, like you said, the butter and things like the creme fraiche, right? You get more of that Mediterranean vibe in in all of that sort of right. stuff. Like a salad niçoise has more, you know, it's far more Mediterranean. It's got right. more that more of that thing going on. Yeah, we do tabbouleh. You know, like uh, Marseille is very multicultural, so I go, you know, there's a lot of people from Al- Algeria and Morocco sure. and yeah. all that. So that was influenced. Like couscous, you know, it's mm-hmm. a big one that we I, I grew up eating, but. So, yeah, we'll get there. We'll, we'll add those. But, like, last winter, we had a cassoulet, you know, which is very southwest of France. But I feel like uh, any French bistro in America should have it just because it's just so delicious. And we come feed the cat, the, the duck leg in-house, yeah. and we made the sausage in-house. And it's just fun, fun product to work with and have people try different flavors. So yeah. I'm curious. Were you always of the mind of having a restaurant? Was that always kind of something that sat in the back of your mind or... How did that development happen for you? That was my dream. That was my little girl dream, actually, is to have a restaurant, yeah, since I was uh, six years old, yeah. That was, yeah, that's my goal, I guess, uh, it's to, uh, don't put them on the floor. (laughs) I almost spilled the craps. We're, we we have no secrets on the show here. I almost spilled the crepes, and this wine is delicious. By the way, this rosé you brought is is from Provence. Yeah, yes, yes. yeah, it's just delicious. It's called it's called the Seeker. Seeker. It's a rosé, 2013. Uh, if you're looking for it, uh, you know it's your favorite wine purveyor. And I mean, really, because it's it's delicious. It's wonderful. Thank you. Fruity, but it's got a nice. Uh, it's just got a nice uh, tongue to it. You know, it's not over-the-top fruity. Theseekerwines.com. Okay, we'll give them a little props. Here. I'm happy to do it. Delicious. So at- <laughs> Want to buy more? We'll do so. Right. Yep, indeed. Very good. Very so good at indeed. Le Town Talk, was it your idea then to bring in the French flavors, the French plates? Because it's a diner. It's an American diner. And right. you could have just continued on that kind of route. But what kind of made you decide, or you and your husband, to decide where you were right. going to go? Well, I think the authenticity, you know, I am from France mm-hmm. and I think there's so many people that are doing French restaurant or French food and, and you know, that some, some of them haven't been in France even. Right, you know? so, right. Oh, uh, but it's, it's just, it's all I know, basically. You know, I, I went to culinary school when I was 15 and that was a while back and <laughs> a couple of years ago. <laughs> oh, and uh, that that's really all I know. That's what I grew up eating. So I felt like the authenticity will be there and, and I can you know, come up with some, some really good stuff. I mean, yeah, diner food is, is great. Um, I, you know, uh, I'm not too for the deep fry things right. and all that. Yep. I, that's not how I eat. I eat, you know, pretty healthy and, and simple. And, uh, so that's what I wanted to give my customers, you know, so, and my husband, my husband's from St. Paul, but you know, but, I'm fortunate enough that he he lived in Europe for a little bit and uh, he know he knows uh, how to appreciate good food. So, but he he got to have his burger once in a while. So we have a, we have a really good burger at the diner <laughs> just for him. And and how about you? Do you do you have to have your burger every now and again? Oh, if for some, sure. Yeah, some of those American things have you know have rubbed off on you too. The the ground beef world and things right. like that. Right. I think the the beef the meat is fantastic here in the United States. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't even eat steak and when I go back to France because I think it tastes very different. But I will, I will, I will eat lamb and veal and all that when I go home because it's much more affordable, and then you can just go to the farm and get it. And you know, but here I feel like you know now we have so many great local farms that raise great cattle, and and yeah, you can have really tasty 
meat. So yeah, I do. I do eat my burger once in a while, <laughs> and I do eat French fries, and it's yeah. okay. You know, everything in moderation. That's what I say, except I for agree. wine. <laughs> <laughs> What's the rule with wine? Right. <laughs> How did you and Ben meet? Uh, we met at a deli in Lower Town in St. Paul. Okay. Golden's Deli. They I know that. Shout yeah, out right, for right them. by the farmers the market. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's how we met. And uh, and you're you both shopping there, buying some foods, he, or what? Hey, what was he going on? He worked there. He worked with Jim. He's long long friend with him, and uh, so he was helping him out for a while over there. And uh, I was working for Reinhardt Food Service. Yeah, so I was selling, the distributor. Yep. Right. So I was selling food there, and Ben was buying food, and and then he started calling those after hours meeting with me. Right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's how it always yeah. starts. Right. right. <laughs> uh, but no, those guys that uh, really actually pushed it because we both were very, very shy. So they really they pushed <laughs> us. They like forced us to go to a bar and watch a, a Twins game. Like that Jim, his boss did. That is that what you're saying? Right. You know? Oh, that's yeah. great. He's like, you need to go out. So you the know? boss, no, no, I love games. that. And, and, were, and, <laughs> yeah. and were your folks at Reinhardt? Were they aware of what's going on? So they were doing the same no, thing too, or not? not? Okay, it all right. It was just a golden. It was more the golden. Okay, yeah, yeah. Got it. Those guys are amazing. So. Um, yeah, and then we did, and you know what? Ten days later, he moved in with me, and then uh, Boom. yeah, two years later, I got married. Three years later, I had a baby girl, and there we are. Nice, yeah. that's great, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Well, you guys obviously had known each other for a while too. Yes. I mean, yeah, you you were you know you were interacting in the food service world. Does mm -hmm. he is is he your partner in this venture? Then does he you is. work together? Yeah, okay. Yep, he is. He's got a he still has his full time job, and uh, and what does he do? He works for Neighborhood Development Center. Mm -hmm. It's a nonprofit in St. Paul, and uh, he uh, he's a real estate uh, development manager. And so he manages uh, Midtown Global Market, and then he specializes in restaurants. So he helps uh, restaurant entrepreneurs uh, keep their business, improve their business, start their business. So he work yeah he worked with East Lake Brewery, uh, help them oh, open that up, excellent. and yeah, a valiant effort. So, yes. we, we right. Yeah, we love the Midtown Global Market. Right. I mean. Fantastic. Molly, Molly McDonald Herman was on the show, yeah. uh, you know, a couple of shows Great. back, and yeah, she, you know, she's got her shop there, and it's just yes. the best. I mean, we love that place. It is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he does he does some good work for them, and <laughs> yeah, he's a good man. Has I'm he been doing dude. that for a while? I mean, wh what I'm getting at is, was he around to help see the genesis of Midtown Global and help it come together? Or no, not? Okay. no, no. He's been with them for a couple years, I think. So, All right. Yeah. 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 But yeah. always in the food what business. What a treat for him, though, because right. the, of the you know the obviously it's called Midtown. Global market for a reason. All the different cultures right. represented there. All the different shops, not just food shops too, but you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the vendors that are in there are just amazing across the board. Cultures everywhere. So, La Town Talk Diner, seven months in. Yes. Where do you see that going? Where is the trajectory headed right now? Bringing in kind of different kind of plates from the Mediterranean, possibly, or what? Where, where's your head at? Uh, you know, uh, right now we're working on maybe doing catering or cool. doing, you know, so we started that business. Or we were able to open a restaurant because uh, Ben and I started selling uh, tart tatin, which is mm -hmm. a upside down apple tart, you know, mm -hmm. caramelized apple tart. We started selling that at the St. Paul Farmer's Market. So that was our first business. And uh, we did that for three years, and it was very successful. And, and we both had a full-time job and doing that on the weekend. And Were you pushing those out of your kitchen at home, or what were you doing there? A shared commercial kitchen? kitchen. A, a shared and, kitchen? You know, and yep. our friend Kieran Foliard actually helped <laughs> us, nice. you know, by uh, letting us his, use his uh, kitchen at the old pub, mm -hmm. you know, and that's where Mike Phillips was. So Mike Phillips was using half of it for his charcuterie, and we were using <laughs> it for a tart, you know. <laughs> And at the old Kieran's in the town building downtown, right. then? yeah, nice, yeah, yeah, because he still pub. had he still had the shop, he still, he had, still had the real estate there for a while. Okay, mm -hmm. so we did that, and uh, um, yeah, and it was very successful. So we were able to save a bunch of money, and then uh, you know that was kind of our startup for for the restaurant. So we we stopped because then we had my daughter, we had our daughter, so uh, it was it was getting to be intense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, did, did it work out well for you guys as a couple uh, that Ben had his gig going on? And were you still working when uh, when Lilu was born? Or were yes. you able to, you know, were one of the both of you able to spend a little more time with your daughter when your daughter arrived then? We were both uh, working, you know, we had flexible job, I think. Yeah, so, that's what I'm getting yeah, at. So, yeah. yeah, along the way, I mean, yeah, you know, new baby. Fine. And yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just nice to have that little additional amount of time if you're able right. to do it. And so I'm glad to hear that yeah, the flexibility of the, of, of the what you were doing let you do that. Right. Mm-hmm. 
So it's been good. We feel we feel lucky, you know, so far it's been great. But yeah, yeah. To, to, to go back to your question, you know, that's one thing I would love to go back to because it was it was really fun and that the whole farmer's market community was just amazing. So I would love to start selling those tarts again over there. You Is know? that right? Yeah. yeah and so and think, turn them out of your own kitchen now, obviously. Right. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a, that's the next step that we'll we'll do and then you know we we dream big so yeah uh, we'll, as you yeah. should yeah right um, you need to share with our podcast listeners the origin of your daughter Lilu's name <laughs> it's from <laughs> Lilu 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 it's from uh, the Fifth Element movie the movie the yeah. Luc Besson movie right yeah yeah when with she Bruce, was, Willis with Bruce Willis and. Uh, Oh, and the actress's name is escaping me now. Mia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It'll come to me. It'll now, come to me. Right as we wrap up the show. Google it. It'll come to me. But her name, yeah. the character's name is... Right. It's Lilu. 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 Yes. Do you want me to do the multipass? Yeah. <laughs> Lilu Dallas multipass. Multi. Lilu multipass. <laughs> Uh, she's a cute kid too. So she's three years old now. Almost three, yeah, right. going on three in July. Mm-hmm. Now she's uh, she's chopping with you in the kitchen. Yes, and she's uh, you know side by side with uh, with you while making food. And like you said, if if she gets involved, she'll eat it. She'll eat it. Yeah, that's super cool. Now, are there, are there things that already she's sort of observing that you guys make that she's you know stepping in? We've asked some questions about. Uh, from from uh, from listeners before, from, from and from guests before, and you know we should get into the Foodie Friday Five right now because it brings me up to my first question because it goes with Lilu. We ask the same five questions from okay. from our guests every week. So for you, what was the? F- and I'm going to ask the same then to you answer about Lilu. Maybe she's already there. Maybe not. <laughs> but what's the first thing you ever made in the kitchen all by yourself? Wow. <laughs> you had to cook it. You know oh. you. You know. You know. It's probably hamburger and and peas. Oh, <laughs> isn't that terrible? Really? Yeah. <laughs> right. That's just something we ate with my brother when we were alone. Just, how old were you when you made hamburger and peas? <laughs> no, 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 it was just like burger patty, I guess. Burger so patties. So the peas were mixed in, or peas were on the side? On the side, on the side. Okay. You know, you got to have your vegetables with your meat. So yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's and I so, think so. I mean, that's the only thing. Yeah, my brother will totally make fun of me for that. But no, that's you know, good. We, no, we, I mean we that's that great. Patty, and then we went in the yard and grabbed a bunch of herbs and like throw it on there, and you know, I mean, like you hamburger it. the French way. Though, yeah, you, you know, cooked we it, cooked right. it with olive oil, and you know, so <laughs> that's probably enough. it. But then uh, I went to culinary school, and then uh, when I was close to passing my degree, I was like chopping all those like cuts of meat and making those stews, or and my dad was thought that was the best thing ever because he's like wow you're cooking all those fantastic because i was training you know for, yep. the, for the test because we didn't know what we we're gonna have to cook right so um so he reaped the benefits really oh yeah my dad was <laughs> loving that 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 time because my mom was working so i was doing all the cooking training during yeah. the day and yeah. we had like a buffet of, of meat it's okay dad so, we have duck confit tonight <laughs> <laughs> it's right. so as a piggyback question then is almost three-year-old Lilu do you see something already happening there with her or not I mean is she sort of moving in that direction whereby you know you, if she's not making something on her own yet or maybe it's just a sandwich or something I mean is she doing you know where's she at is she is she doing something where if she if if she's hungry mommy I want I'm hungry and and she might ask you in French because you're teaching her both languages. Right, right. But you can say in either language, of course, uh, "Darling daughter, you know, go into the kitchen and make your own peanut butter and jelly," and she can do it, you know, or whatever. Is, right. she, is she there already? Cereals. Okay. Well, all right. <laughs> make your own hamburger and yeah. peas. And yeah. peas, yeah. honey. Uh, no, I don't know. Uh, let's see. What does she make? She yeah, definitely like. Toast with like anything on it, cream cheese or peanut butter. Okay. Yep, she yeah. definitely does that. You know, at, at almost three, I don't three, have that's to pretty cool. supervise. Or she'll throw like all the fruits in the blender, you know, to make yeah, a smoothie. A smoothie. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, she yeah. does that. Um, what else does she do? She knows how to use she the equipment. Yeah. Anything in the frying pan, and then we heat it up. You know, she mixes it. Oh, she, oh, you know one thing. 
omelet. She so does she her, can own do her own omelet. Nice. There you go. Right. There you With have a little it. mom supervision she, there because yeah. there's, yeah, yeah. I'll be in the yeah, kitchen, yeah. but she'll crack the egg, she'll add the milk, <clears throat> salt, pepper, some That's herbs, great. blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Omelet, she's a pro at it. She even makes it better than I do. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Boy, that says a lot there. <laughs> you got a foodie fi- uh, five list there? I, 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 I sure right, do. Right. You, so you, we already answered the first question, which what's the first thing you ever made by yourself that you had to cook? Second question that I'm really interested in your answer is, is what's the most pretentious food that you crave? The most pretentious? Pretentious food. So we're trying to demystify the term foodie, and you get to crave maybe some a little bit more expensive ingredients or more expensive plates. But if someone were to hear you say, oh, foie gras, which is a common answer that we get. Right. Right. Of course, Emily would want foie gras. What's the most pretentious thing that you crave? Oh, so I couldn't say foie gras? You can, okay. if that's what it is. Uh, Tornador Rossini. Yeah, what's yeah. that? Yeah, it's uh, the filet mignon and then foie gras, seared foie gras. Oh on my it. god! Yeah, that's something that I ne- like. Last time I had, you know, actually, who and I haven't seen that guy in uh, twelve years because I've been. It's uh, Thomas that owns now a corner table. Yep. Yeah, Tom Bamer. Right. Yeah, so he's, Thomas Bamer. He's the one that made me this the last time I ate it because we were both working at uh, La Fougasse in mm-hmm. uh, at the Sofitel. And before I left, that's the last meal he cooked for us. Nice. It was Tornado Rossini. That was very sweet of him. But since then, I haven't seen him. So there you go. So Time you, for you a trip to the corner table. Right, I know. Yeah. I'm due. I'm due. And those, and those guys are doing amazing work there. Yeah. And then they've got their other shop that just opened, too. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Who taught you the most about food? Third question. Who taught you the most about food? My mama. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No and doubt. You, you kind of already illuminated right. on that. That's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Lid? The smell of this food makes you the hungriest. Oh. Just the smell. And remember, Marcel Proust said Madeleines, and it kind of you know triggered all oh, those memories. And you know, another little French, a little French reference for you. There. <laughs> I think uh, bread baking. Yeah. 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 We've heard that one too. Oh, yeah. 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 That's that's yeah that's fantastic. Is it hard to find bread here? That kind of no. We, we <laughs> our shop is right next to New French Bakery. Okay. And when I drive by it, yeah. and they happen to bake. I just pull You're over. The I just air. pull over. I just got to. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Is there a specific bread that you crave the most? A baguette. Yeah. That's all I eat pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Again, I'm French. The, st- so. the stereotype is <laughs> right. I just, that's true. Cool. I mean, it's okay. Yeah, sorry. it's right. It's good. It's good. What's your uh, last question? Uh, the Foodie Friday Five wraps up with what's your guilty pleasure food? Guilty pleasure. Chocolate mousse? No, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Have you had some of this chocolate mousse? No, by I'm the way? gonna do that right. Every by time now. I walk in that I'm walk in, right <gasps> I take a spoonful. <laughs> so we've got chocolate mousse. We've got uh, are these candied uh, orange is, is peel. This can- yep, candied orange peel. And is this a uh, caramel a, crunch? A, a caramel crunch on top. Oh man. I've already. I love candy. Tip. I love candied orange peel. Chocolate and orange are just two of the best things in the world mm-hmm. that go together. Even just a little bit of chocolate. Uh, with some orange zest in it, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We used to make a product when Lori and I, Lydia's mom, had our had our fine foods business, and okay. and it was a chocolate tort uh, that had uh, just that little bit of. Little bit of it was a it was a ricotta with uh, a, a ricotta orange cheese. zest in it, right. and then there was and a rum chocolate ganache, ganache with just a little zest. Just that little bit of zest made all the difference See? in that in that chocolate flavor. It just added that. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. See, that reminds me. So my mom, for our birthday, she'll always make our birthday cake, which is always the same for everybody in the family, and it's just like five layers of chocolate cake <laughs> and between the chocolate ganache and orange marmalade oh, in between yeah. each layer mm. and then perfect. covered in chocolate <laughs> and then we slice it and drizzle or well, drizzle or pour <laughs> rum over a slice <laughs> douse no? it in yes. rum mm-hmm. perfect <laughs> so that's exactly what you're talking about oh yes. my god that was amazing good. that was really good that uh, like i said that candied orange hit and it's just that's i love that it, and i love that it sticks in my teeth a little bit <laughs> <laughs> it means there's some for later. <laughs> but yeah, the flavors just mesh so well together. I don't think enough uh I don't think enough Americans 
get that anywhere beyond what, what's that chocolate that's shaped like an orange? Mm, yeah, you know that, I'm you talking? Smack that you and, smack. Like the holidays, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and it's got the orange flavor in it, and that's right. why it's the shape. But uh, the, those flavors should just go together all the time. Agreed. Yeah, citrus, but especially orange and chocolate. Right. Yeah, they really, really mesh well together. Gosh, good for you. Mm. So you got a lot of people creating a lot of these things for you, but do you still do you, do you still you know get in there, get in the kitchen, oh, like, exp yeah. experimenting on, on new things, or or you see a recipe somewhere else and you might want to might want to modify it a little bit and bring it into your shop? Right. Do you find enough time to yes. to get your hands dirty, so to speak? Oh yeah, and enjoy I that? walk back there, I try everything, <clears throat> and we talk about it. And I have a great team. They're very open. They sometimes they're like, "Get out of here! Get out of here!" You know, but uh, they know they know what I like. They know the flavors that I like now, and I'm looking for. So, but yeah, I, I just check on everything. Oh, add a little bit of this, so add a little bit of that, or yeah. you know, when we switch the menu. We make a floating island dessert, and you know, it's a vanilla custard, but. Um, it's a great vanilla custard, but if you had some lemon zest in it, it's even better. Back to that you know? zest again. Right. Just that little bit of citrus, that you know? little hit of citrus. Right. Yeah. So, you know, that, that just little changes like that so that I, you know, try and, you know, to bully. And... You know, foodie fans, if, if, you, if you don't have a microplane in your mm. inventory, it's going to be the best gift that you'll give yourself because mm -hmm. you can take those fresh lemons, those fresh oranges, and as uh, Emily was just saying, no matter, and, and, I, and I'll add to it, no matter what you're doing, even just on a salad, right. and you just want that little hit of citrus in there. And, and it's very, perfect. We've and brought this up before, too. Yeah, we had uh, Tinto Cocina y Cantina mm. talking about doing a little squeeze of lime. Squeeze, squeeze yes. of lime just oh, on always. a lot of stuff. Yeah, but, you know, uh, everybody's looking to eat more healthfully, and you can just put a little vinegar, a little olive oil, mm -hmm. and then and then it's just going to it's gonna add that flavor to a basic salad and just put a little orange zest or some lemon zest. Right. Uh, we're using that microplane, so it's just real fine, mm -hmm. and just let it sprinkle over that salad and and you're 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 saving yourself probably 150 calories because right. you're not dosing up on a big <laughs> glop of salad dressing, dressing but you're yes. getting all this wonderful natural very spring and summer flavor mm -hmm. and you know citrus always does that anyhow yes. but especially with all those other spring and summer flavors the lettuce and the tomato whatever else you might have right. in there it's just amazing so you know just a, a good little true. weight watcher thing too it's wonderful get a microplane <laughs> Because that'll get you there. You're so caring. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's, it's the way I work. <laughs> might, might be the wine talking to you, but, you know, whatever. So we're almost at the end of this episode. Um, for a listener that has never been to the Town Talk Diner, what should they eat? What should they go in and first time? Yeah, what are your, and what are your faves? You know, so... Uh, my favorites right now, oh, we have that awesome, you know, the chipolata sausage and that uh, cauliflower and carrot coleslaw. That so, yeah, you know, I'm glad you brought flavors. that up because we saw you last uh, on Friday at the Minnesota Restaurant Association annual uh, flavor gathering mm -hmm. at uh, that Muse Event Center held. Mm -hmm. And that salon, I brought it up to you when we talked on the phone the other day. That was really delicious. So say the ingredients again, please. Uh, it, it was So the slaw is cauliflower, <clears throat> fennel, carrots, uh, and then we plump raisin and bourbon and yeah. orange. Oh. Juice. Oh my God! Yeah, it's yeah. Really good. it really was. Like yeah, citrus, yeah. champagne, vinaigrette. Yep, and, a different, uh, a different take on slaw. You know, right. it wasn't it's your a traditional. Yeah, what, well, and cabbage <laughs> is good for you too, but it was just it was a different take on it. You mm -hmm. know, with the with the the cauliflower. Uh, of the cauliflower. Yeah, yep. it had a, it had a different flavor to it. It was wonderful. Right, and then we make a chipolata sausage to go with that to balance it off and. Um, that's just, you know, ground pork and then we put nutmeg in it, which will be the different flavor and chipotle powder and cayenne and so all that, those good flavors. And, uh, so that will be one of my favorite It's very refreshing. And then you get the, the hot sausage and then the, the, the cold slaw with it. So it's all I, balanced out. Right. I like that. You know, bouillabaisse, I can eat bouillabaisse every night, you know, that's, <laughs> that's healthy and then it's, it's good. I like fish. So, yeah. cause where I grew up, but once in a while, the burger. I'll go for the yeah. burger because our burger is fantastic. We made that onion glaze, and uh, you know it's caramelized onion, and we add some red wine to it, and and then we cook it down until it just every all the onions breaks down, and that's uh, my put favorite. The Gruyere cheese and the buns, you know, from New French are really good, and we make a remoulade sauce that you know we're ninety nine percent scratch kitchen, so everything is. Um, that's the way to go. Yeah, yeah good for you. What about yeah, you cocktails? Can tell the difference. Oh, cocktails. Because drinkery. We, we covered right. the drinkery part We started earlier. with drinkery. We started with drinkery. I think we need to end with drinkery. <laughs> 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 At bookends very well yes, for me. 
Yeah, for, uh, cocktails, I will say the P.S. I Love You is my absolute favorite. I really like gin, and that's made of uh, gin, lime juice, and uh, uh, mashed cucumber. Yum. Um, and probably something else that I'm forgetting right now, but it's very refreshing. It's kind of like a gin and tonic without yeah. the tonic, if well, you like, want. Like the Hendrix gin has that cucumber <laughs> right. feel kind of taste to right. it. Yeah, So, but you're making that taste yeah, on your own. Super yeah, super fresh. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so P.S. I Love You is really good. Especially for a summery drink to right. quench yeah. the thirst. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I like those earthy flavors, you know, like when you add the cucumber and mm-hmm. other things that you might not expect in a cocktail. But, right. but yeah, in the summertime, especially spring and summer, those really just have a, a refreshing edge yeah. to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, when, when can we maybe see you at the farmer's market again? At, um, maybe I'm next hoping season? hoping next season, yeah, okay. yes, yes. Yeah, because that'll be fun if right. if, uh, if we can buy that stuff uh, and you know see you guys out there Saturday and Sunday with little Lilu and Toe. Right. You know? Yeah, I'll put her to work for I, sure. Well, yeah, yeah. I, you know, she you, was on a chop. You, you is, by that time you got a cute almost four year old. <laughs> she's going to move more inventory than you'll be able to keep up with. You know, she's True. Hey, exactly. We got our bestseller. We can't let her go. Right. Lilu, just stand out there and look cute. Look Not cute. too tough for I'll you to bring do. Bring the dog and yeah. the baby. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. He'll just hang out in the background and count the money, sister. That's all you're going to do all day long. You've been absolutely charming and such a Thank pleasure you. to have you here on Foodie Thanks Friday. For me. Thank you so much. It's Emily Soleil from Le Town Talk Diner and Drinkery. Drinkery. Give us the tagline, Liddy. It's Foodie Friday. Coming in hot, always fresh, never stale. Thanks for listening. See you next week. <laughs>